And in green chemistry, we seek to reduce the environmental footprint of an existing process. So here are a few ideas that are mentioned in your, in your IB um, textbook. One is the replacement of existing methods to extract caffeine with the use of pressurized carbon dioxide, which can be just as effective at extracting the caffeine, but again, it doesn't have the environmental footprint that the existing chemicals do. We can again use corn-based plastics instead of existing uh, petroleum-based plastics. And also we can replace detergents with enzymes. Enzymes are capable of operating at lower temperatures and also can reduce, therefore, our need for hot water. And a final aspect of green chemistry involves the selection of processes which show a high degree of atom economy. Now, we define atom economy, or at least can calculate it, by using this formula. We can look at the mass of the atoms in our desired product and compare them then to the mass of our reactants. So I'm going to look at two processes here to produce water. Let's examine the atom economy of these two particular methods. So in the first one, what I'm going to do is determine the relative mass of the species involved. So methane is 16. I have two oxygens at 32. And again, my desired product is water. So I have two of those at 18. So if I now determine the total mass here of these species, I get 80. And the total mass then of my desired product comes out to 36. So hence my atom economy would be 36 over 80 times 100 or 45%. My second method, I'll do a similar set of operations. I have two hydrogens at two apiece, and I have one oxygen at 32. And again, two waters are being produced at 18. So this total is 36, and on this side, 36. So this particular method would be 100% efficient in terms of the atoms that are used. And from an argument of an atom economy, this would be the more efficient means. Now, it's not the final deciding factor as to what method will be chosen. One would also need to consider the energy requirements and also perhaps the catalysts that might be required um, and the impact they may have. So that brings us to an end of standard level chemistry. In our next series of programs, we'll take a look at some of the higher end options that are added.